everybody. Welcome back to the 90th Minute. Welcome to our podcast. We are your hosts today. We got Greg, Waz, Lucas, and myself, Liam. If you are new to the 90th Minute, please make sure you do subscribe here on YouTube. Hit like on this video and comment down below. Get involved with the conversations we have today. We want to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section. Mm -hmm. If you are listening to us on one of the audio apps, Spotify, Apple, anything like that, thank you very much for the support. Make sure you give it a good a good uh, review, share it with your friends, help us get our name out there on the audio platforms. We've had, uh, we had a great week of football, we're going to discuss all of that. But before we get into the action, boys, summertime is here, it means we're coming up to June, which means Father's Day. Now, get a good gift for your father this year, he's probably put up with you while you've been in the house, you know, and stuck during the pandemic. So, treat him to some fantastic products at... Manscaped.com, fantastic guys over there. When you use code 90th at checkout, you'll not only receive free shipping, but you'll get 20% off your order. And this is their brand new lawnmower 4.0. I can run you through some of the fantastic new features that it has. Not only does it have Manscaped's patented uh, skin safe technology, you won't cut yourself, it's clean, it's reliable, it's great. Uh, it's also got brand new wireless charging, means you can take it on the go with you. It's it's just better in every way. It's still waterproof, still got the great light on it. Brand new to the 4.0 is a travel lock, so when you travel with it, you can take it with you, and it's not going to turn on in your suitcase and, you know, waste all the battery life, all that good stuff. What else should I say? Honestly, it's simple. Manscaped products, best for male grooming below the waist. It's clean, it's simple, designed well, prices are great. The skin safe technology is revolutionary for, for male grooming, but check it out, manscaped.com, you get 20% off and free shipping when you use code 90th at checkout. Now, like I said before, like, comment, subscribe, let's get into the podcast. Let's go. Where should we start today, Lucas? There's, o uh, there's only one, I know I'm not Lucas, but there's only one place to go. I Championship like to playoff? Get, I... I always like to give Lucas it. the reins, that's, so, I mean, Lucas, if you that, want to start championship... That's where I was going, Lucas. <laughs> no, are you guys crazy? Are you crazy? The <laughs> Champions League! <laughs> I can't deal with this shit anymore. I, I hear you, man. I don't know what that was. I don't know what that voice was. But yes, the UEFA Champions League final has occurred. The all-English final held in Porto... There's a champion. Their name is Chelsea Football Club. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was a great the final. I thought it was very entertaining. I love you. Thank you. Thank you know, you, man Chelsea. of the match, definitely Hakim Ziyech. <laughs> I thought it was Willie Caballero, actually. He looked great looking at the trophy. Yeah. But no, in I'm all good. seriousness, of course, the biggest match in club football in Europe and heavy favorites Manchester City suffer a shock defeat in the final. 1-0 at the hands of Chelsea. Kai mm -hmm. Havertz scoring the goal right before halftime. It was a great game. Um, I've seen I, a couple I people... It, yeah. I've seen a couple people online, oh, 1-0, boring. Honestly, I thought this was a fantastic final. I thought it was very back and forth, very open. Lots of chances at either end. Um, Second half kind of closed down a bit, but that's probably expected. It, it, the thing is, it was so much better than the past two yes. Champions League finals. You're not wrong. Uh, 2019, you know, was kind of shite. No offense, Lucas. 2020 was okay. I won't, like. I was obviously hyped because Lewandowski and Davies winning it, but it was okay. But that this, game just should have been a better game. It just should have yeah. been a better game, and it just wasn't. This, this, this one, was just a better game. I mean, it finishes 1-0, but I really, really thought it was a really good game. I really enjoyed watching it. We did stream it live over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash yeah. ninth minute official, of course. But, I mean, there's um, a lot of key moments from the beginning to the end. Uh, you know, obviously, Timo Werner, he missed some big chances again. That that trend continues to be the same, it seems. Uh, but I thought but, Chelsea's players were great. Like, you know, Kai Havertz, Mason Mount, Rudiger, and Gola Conte, of course, man of the match. I think most people agree. Well, I, I think we should start off there because, uh, like I said, it was from beginning to end, and it was from the very, very beginning because... A lot of the drama started before kickoff, even with Manchester City starting eleven and the lack of a CDM. Um, yes, that was a big Guardiola, talking point. 
Pep Guardiola formation in the midfield consisted of Bernardo Silva, Gundogan, Phil Foden, and up front was Mares and Sterling on the wings, and Kevin De Bruyne playing as a false nine. Something we have not seen from Manchester City, something we haven't seen from Pep Guardiola, so we don't understand why he chose this game to make this uh, adjustment to the starting eleven. Pep likes to overthink games. Uh, that, I think that's, that's what he did today. That's that looks yesterday. like the common theme, and another big Champions League moment for Manchester City goes goes wrong because of the starting eleven. Um, Lucas, I see you want to say something. Go ahead. Well. I mean, things were going well for him throughout the Champions League campaign when he wasn't doing anything crazy with the lineup. Now, really, the first 15, 20-ish minutes, maybe 30 minutes of the game, it looked like it was a good choice because City were pressing high up the pitch. They were having most of the possession. Uh, they were they were close to creating some dangerous chances. Raheem Sterling got a ball over the top. He had a poor t- touch in that situation. Foden almost got a goal, but Rud- Rudiger came out of nowhere. City were... We're getting able. We're able to get by Chelsea's attack, midfield, and defense at points. But I think Chelsea adapted pretty well, and yeah, they started yeah. giving less space for um, for their attacking players to really create anything. And well, well, I know during our stream, a lot of people were hating on Raheem Sterling. Oh, get him out of here! Get him out! I thought Raheem Sterling was actually playing well, especially in the first, I would say, 20 minutes of that first half. He was getting him behind down that left side. Yeah. Reese James had to drop back into more of a right back rather than a right wing back. And it really, it, it dropped the Chelsea back line further back. But that change by Chelsea was what actually made their their their, their, their game better. Oh, uh, Reese James had defend. a really good game, though, too. He did. And they sat further back. They defended. Then they pushed forward more as a unit rather than just going down the wings consistently but Wait, and Luke, lucas was talking about rudiger making a last so good. second tackle oh, he's fantastic. block however you want to say it but like there was like four of those kind of chances for city where chelsea's like yes. last defender made such an important tackle or interception i, I know as and it saved two, a goal as we yeah. two of them at back post I thought oh, he, he was fantastic. Great, yeah, I think Chelsea had a great game. Oh, I think yeah, Chelsea's player. back line as a whole was fantastic. Jorginho Conte was fantastic. Mason yeah. Malik. I mean, maybe the one person who didn't have a good was like maybe Timo Werner. Timo he missed Werner. some big <laughs> chances, but still he wasn't but, uh, bad. He was runs, still climbing. making runs. Yeah, like, got his team the, out of. He made the important run to create the goal. He pulls the the Man City uh, back line to the left. Mason Mount does extremely well to to I, use I the think, space. I think the big thing in this game will definitely have been the fact that Man City did not play a, cent- like a, a defensive midfield like Fernandinho or Rodri. I wonder if he did that just because like it's going to, oh, it'll, it'll, it'll catch Chelsea off guard. They won't know what I'm doing. It'll confuse them in their head. Like some, no. It's I just think they just like, want it. Yeah. They, I think that they just wanted to play more attacking against Chelsea. I think it's so. Just... I think that. I think and, and it would, was yeah. working until they got that one chance. If, the, I think if that's maybe... where they, if they had a defensive midfielder there, Mason Mount's probably not making that pass. Well, Someone's, I think there's a lot of ifs and buts. work necessarily. Well, Sorry to cut you guys yeah. off there. I mean, I know you're going to explain yourself there in a second, Greg. But yeah, like Chelsea did create some chances that probably could have been or should have been scored. And of course, like you probably going to mention, that goal did happen because a wide gap was left open. Well, well, like, so in those kind of situations, John Stones, I'm pretty sure is who it was, got pulled out by Timo Werner, like you said. Ruben Diaz, I think, was covering someone else or he just was a little out of position but there's a big gap between john stones and ruben right diaz there the and that is where fernandinho yep. would have been yeah kind of thing mm-hmm. so well, or think, rodri I mean, one of them thinking, would have been there. thinking i think was i trust my back four to defend i trust them to just sit back I'm not going to push my fullbacks up to it. We, Kyle Walker and Zinchenko are very capable of going forward. Kyle Walker did it a little bit more, but I thought both fullbacks were a little bit further back. He trusted that back four to sit there. Nothing gets past you. Simple as that. The front six, then, are just going to be high press, high intensity, win the ball back up high, and score that goal. Chelsea's mm-hmm. back line, though, didn't lose possession. Chelsea's back line... Yeah. They, they, they did it perfectly. They were able to, to move the ball out wide to those fullbacks and then put it in behind for Mount, yeah. Timo Werner, Christian Pulisic, Kai Havertz, whoever. And, and, and they they took the midfield, or the Man City midfield, they took it out of the equation. They, they just went around them. They went over them. And then 
you have to give so much credit to N'Golo Kante and Jorginho. They they work so hard. I, I don't know how, how much ground N'Golo Kante ran in that final, but the man yeah. covered the space of the moon, I think it was, because it was just, he went, he was incredible. He was, I mean, we're so used to seeing Jesus it. Jesus Christ. We're so, so used to I, I punched I, my mic. I'm so sorry. No, I'm, I'm re-watching the goal. Sorry. And then there's like... I'm watching the Mason Mass through ball, and there's just so much space, space. The middle. for Kai Havers to make a run through. The only player really close to him was Zinchenko. No one in the midfield. You may have maybe like Gundogan. And yeah, you, like you said, Timo Werner kind of pulls away the other defenders. It, it's, in, it's insane that you think a Man City team like that, so well structured, would allow so much space for Kai Havers to kind of find a way through. It's kind of like Leicester City. It was one moment. Or like, yeah. It's kind of yeah. like Leicester City where they. Well, let in a, let a lot of space and we're conceding goals that were kind of cheap. Well, obviously, I think I think the way I'm viewing Pep Guardiola right here, maybe he's saying, okay, I have all these attacking players. I'm confident that they can hold on to the ball, be patient, and break down Chelsea's back line because it is heavily defense. So mm-hmm. based on their mindset, it's like, okay, if we just stay patient, a mistake will happen. We'll be able to p- pierce through that back line. They're probably thinking, well, you know, Thiago Silva, Rudiger, they could be prone to make some mistakes. That wasn't the case, nope. and one nil. Um, it was very hard for Chelsea to make mistakes because yeah. those players in big matches have been super focused. Like now, like usually when they're not the favorites in matches, they're so focused. They and, know they mm-hmm. have to be on their hundred percent. Now, of course, uh, Thiago Silva did come off an injury just before that goal happened. That was sad to see, but luckily they were able to win the game for him. And obviously Chelsea's board. But the key moment was when Kevin De Bruyne came off. I think we need to talk about that moment. Yeah, Very that sad moment. Talked. To be fair, yeah. we haven't even mentioned the goal. Like, well, So say- Kai Havertz, what we were talking about, Mason Mount did send that ball through to Kai Havertz. And he did go around Ederson yeah. and put it into the empty net. So I, I think yeah, Kai cool. Havertz was incredible in this game. I think this is his best Chelsea game, I think. His hold oh, up yeah. play was great. His goal was, was superb. He was able to round Ederson, like you said. Even just his runs in behind, I, I this is the Kai Havertz we were used to seeing in Germany. Now I really enjoyed watching. Yeah, him. but it's cr- he's it's actually crazy. finally playing further forward. Yeah, Lampard yeah. was playing him so deep. Yeah, he's playing him as a number eight at some points. So I remember watching the match against Wolves. He was playing as a number eight. I'm like, that's not where Kai Havertz. That's not where. Yeah, no. In he, he plays like striker for. It, for like, <laughs> like he played much further forward. That's like yeah. there's a reason why he scored so many goals in the Bundesliga. <laughs> But like Wazi was saying, at the hour mark, there was an injury for Kevin De Bruyne. He he had to go off due to a facial injury. It has come out that he has broken fractured. his cheekbone and his he nose like, bone. Something he like wow. fractured his nose and his eye. Like his eye, his some, color, his eye yeah. socket kind of thing. Um, it was a freak accident. He turned um, yeah. into Rudiger. Rudiger did get a yellow card on the play, but really it wasn't anywhere he could go. I mean, he Rudiger was collided. trying to block it off. And- Rudiger knew what he was doing. He extent. knew what he was doing. Yeah. He, he, he wasn't trying he was to injure, but he knew he, he was... He wasn't... Tra- exactly. He's just trying to take a tactical foul. Because yeah. Kevin De Bruyne probably could have been in on goal there if yeah. he didn't do that. But yeah, De Bruyne does go off at the 60th minute, and it does change a lot of the game. It, it changes the way City were pressing. That's, that's were insane. Holding possession. What's up, Wilson? I'm watching the highlight, the replay of the injury. and It's essentially... Kevin De Bruyne just kind of runs into Rudiger. It's one of those things that happened in the heat of the moment, right? Like, Ru- Rudiger was trying to maybe close down a passing lane. De Bruyne's going to try to make a run for it. Pass it. Yeah, essentially. And, I mean, there were some people, like, asking, oh, he, he meant to do that. And, like, no, Rudiger came out and said, I didn't mean to injure him. Yeah. It kind of happened. He apologized after as well. Class yeah. move by I, Rudiger. I find it kind of similar to when Mo Salah got injured yeah. against Real Madrid from Sergio Ramos. Like kind of that Absolutely. that kind of scenario. Not, it's not exactly the same, of course. No. But it's like your your key player that season gets injured yeah. at, in the final. Like, well, your key player offensively, and it, it affects you for the rest of the game. And I mean, City second half they they had a few chances, but like there was obviously that Mars one late. There probably was another yeah. one that was a decent now, chance. But City I just were, want to talk about Chelsea were defending well. So I want to talk about that intro real quick because. Uh, later on in the evening, I went on Instagram. I went on to some random post by Kevin De Bruyne. I read some comments. And, the, and here's the idiots. I'm not going to name this guy. He's just some random dude on Instagram. Uh, it wasn't our Instagram either. It was like 433 or something. He's like, this is what I said with De Bruyne. Anyone else think that De Bruyne bitched out? I've been kicked in the face, headbutted, and broke my toe. If you want to proceed, you will proceed. Players nowadays have no heart. 
And here's his reply. So you expect him to play with concussion. How do you know he was concussed? And he kind of went out and said, I call it how I see it. Been watching football, let alone all sports, and I know what heart looks like. That was weakness. Calling me names or labels does it relevant. Did you watch the Europa match between United and whatever? Like, dude, when someone is like, gets a head injury, they're getting off the pitch. I don't care. You don't. He you stop them from playing. Face. He literally yeah. broke his face. Like, like, I'm sorry. Like, you can maybe have a a bone injury somewhere. Like, something can break, and you can still. Some players will still play on. But head head injury, you're off the pitch. I don't care who you are. That's like in cases most athletes in any sport. In the NHL, you saw what happened with John Tavares. He was sent off. He couldn't play anymore. He basically collapsed. What if that happened to Kevin De Bruyne? Well, and it, he should, like, come off no matter what. Yeah. But it's also, just thinking of it like this, it's Kevin De Bruyne. And with what happened to him, he's such a creative player. His vision, his mm-hmm. mental game is exactly. insane. Imagine, like, so... <laughs> imagine questioning a player in the finals, his heart, yeah. like, piss off yeah. to that he guy. was yeah, crying like, like he he wanted to keep playing you know he was he, he, and the thing about you're playing in such a high intensity match you're not going to be playing while your head is kind of feeling a bit off you know mm. when you're gonna start wobbling you might throw who knows right like you can't continue to play in that condition 100 yeah, and and people that comment stuff like that are the people that really don't have a place in 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 sports or in football is like you know keep your opinions to yourself and just just move on because it's ridiculous, and, and and I don't think I don't think comments like that affect a player too much. Like if a player happens to be reading Instagram, or whatever, if you see something like that, I don't think that would affect him because you go, "Okay, this guy's just dumb." It's the comments of, "Oh, you don't care about the club, you don't that stuff like that." If I was a player, I, I'd be really affected by that. I think. Um, but let's continue on with the final because for the most of the second half. Manchester City had possession. They had the ball mm-hmm. in the Chelsea half. They were pushing and pushing. I think about the 70th, 75th minute is when we saw plan B from Manchester City, which was crossing balls, long balls into the box, which didn't work. Um, we've said this about Man City time and time again, that when they go to plan B, it doesn't work. It's not their best play style, especially against Chelsea. They had Antonio Rudiger winning every single cross into the box. They... They had Christensen in there, who's who's not a slouch in the air. Aspilicueta won his fair share of of uh, of crosses. I don't know why City is that's their their backup plan kind of thing. It's you get for you get forced into it. But they're they're technically one of the best clubs in the world. Pass it, the ball, move the ball. It's hard. And, and yeah, but you happens. can't just pass the. Unfortunately, you're also getting pushed for time. You can't just pass the ball around. I know what you're saying, but you can't just pass the ball around. When the, you got Chelsea's got nine players in the box, yeah, and, right? and like, time is running out, and you need to yeah. have, make something happen. You gotta quick. put the ball in the box, hope for a, a lucky break, and it almost did come at the end when Mares just put it over the bar, yeah, it just close. missed that top corner. I mean, ultimately, it ends one nil for Chelsea. They are champions of Europe for the second time. Manchester City's wait for the Champions League will go on for at least another season, and people are gonna ask. Pep Guardiola about his starting 11. They're going to ask, why can he not win this trophy outside of Barcelona? People are going to ask, why is the city of Manchester the absolute bottle jobs? I want to know the answer to that as well. Don't worry, we'll, we'll, get get on, we'll get on the United, don't you worry. But wh- I have a question for the three of you. Was this city's time? You know, I, they have struggled no. to get to the final before. Yeah. I viewed it, I viewed it a bit their differently. their chance? I think this is uh, the moment where Manchester City fans feel the heartbreak of football. It's been a while since they felt that, winning numerous Premier Leagues, you know, the Aguero moment. I mean, Carabao Cups. What about, Cups, what about their, their times at Champions League, though? The, the yes, that's, that, is, that is true. You're not wrong. But the, when you get to a final, it's a bit more emotional because you're it's so all, close. Yeah, and it's also when they lost those other Champions League finals, or not finals, the Champions League games in the past few years and everything. Yeah. It's just be, it's their own fault. Like, they yes. blew it. They I, absolutely blew it. This was just a little more saddening. The way I view it, sorry, Lucas, is that they lost this final, but I think they will go on next year to win it. Right now, I'm feeling. Um, they remind yeah. me. Sorry, sorry, Luke, sorry Liverpool. <laughs> Li- Liverpool is that they, what you're gonna yeah, say though? They, they, yeah, they remind me of Liverpool in 2018. They won in the next year, uh, and Bayern Munich in 2012 when they lost at Chelsea and they went on to win in 2013. So I feel like that's what's gonna happen here. Well, it's, I, I don't even mean to keep it, <laughs> but like, 
we know what who City is targeting in the transfer window. A amazing striker in either Harry Kane or Holland or anything. Imagine one of those going up front with that City team. You could actually cross the ball. And no. Anyways, <laughs> Liam, let's let Lucas speak. Lucas. Can I open my mouth without uh, <laughs> speaking too early? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with Waz. Like, they could. This could be like a Liverpool situation. I see it more as a Liverpool situation compared to a Spurs because this isn't the end of a cycle for for Manchester oh, God, City. No. Not at all. No. This no. is a team. They had their bad season last year. They had a great season this year. They 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 still have the relatively same amount of players. They're gonna probably build upon the season. Some older players are leaving, like Aguero, but they they'll probably be able to replace but, them pretty easily. But, but like someone like Phil Foden is that's a, a another season yeah. of experience. Like, yeah, under Foden, his dad, Bernardo man. Silva. And the thing is, you know, I, I doubt Diaz. another Man City player will. Um, another Man City youth player will come through, but they they do have a good academy going on right now, so you never know what might come I up. I mean, next they season. do have Delap who's coming through. Yeah. He's a striker and um, he, he not as good at throw-ins as Rory Delap because uh, apparently <laughs> parents got mad at t- him when he did throw-ins when he was younger, <laughs> so he stopped him. <laughs> kind of random, but, uh, but suppose he's a really wonder- promising striker. My one asterisk about City coming back stronger. I think they'll have a much, much more difficult season next year in the Premier League. We look at Liverpool with a healthy squad. They'll be much more difficult. United, they spend a little bit of money. They'll be a a title contender. Fuck, I hope Uh, so. Chelsea are going to be definite uh, title contenders. The Premier League, I'm going to say top six, are going to be so difficult and so tight next season that City's going to have to work Every single week, we we have not seen a city like we have this season where they've dropped so many points and still won the Premier League. City dropped that many points next year, I don't think they win the Premier League. So City will have to be perfect every single week in the Premier League and in Champions League. And I don't know if they can. I gotta be honest, I don't know if they will be able to. Those questions are always going to be, you know... Ask can I, it can they do it again? This and that. I, I just I they think they have the quality. They, they, they were there. They were yes, the I, I I get you. What I mean, but I feel like losing a final, it, it that hunger will be there, right? It's not like Dortmund in twenty thirteen when they lost a final. You think they can go back, but the difference between Man City and Dortmund is that Dortmund was ready to sell players off. Yes, like Lewandowski, Man City. I don't see them selling any of these players, no. except for you know, obviously Aguero, maybe Sterling, maybe. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, and then if they do sell, they'll have more than competent replacements. It's not. The fuck it, I don't have. I don't have an issue. I don't have an issue with the the Man City squad. I have yeah. an issue with. Can it be just too much? Week in week out. Yeah, well, after we'll, a year we'll find else, out. We'll find you know, out. That's the thing. Yeah, the and uh, and well, I guess the last thing to say it is fair play to Chelsea. You they guys react. had a fantastic yeah. end they of the so season. Good. What's yeah. uh? What's, what's kind of cool is now this is the third German manager in a row to win. The Champions League, which is interesting, you yeah. know, the Germans said this, they seem to know how to, they're, they're pretty good at the magic thing. Except so, Yogi Love. Yogi Love can, can leave whenever he wants. Oh, he was pretty good, but you know, some some may say it was because of uh, Hansi Flick in 2014, but yeah. he, he's past his prime, you know, he's past his expiration date the way I view it. At the end of the day, like Greg said, congratulations to Chelsea, you are champions of Europe. Yeah. Commiserations to City, I'm now, sure you will be back sooner rather than later. But we should stick on the topic of Manchester, though. No, no, no. One question for you guys. Who was your man of the match? Mine, N'Golo Kante. N'Golo Kante. It's N'Golo Kante, but Kai Havertz gets a second shot. I mean, I don't really disagree with you guys. I I, I want to play one thing before we go on to City, because this was the funny moment Liam uh, brought up up from uh, the final. Kai Havertz, when asked about his uh, little deal, I think I still have it on my phone. Let me check here. Uh, Yeah, I have it. Yeah, basically, if you missed what the reporter asked, he's like, do you feel like you paid back your 80 million in uh, price tag? He says, I don't give a shit. I just won the Champions League. <laughs> Speak some good English, so, honestly. I mean, yeah, no, not most right. Germans do, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, Germans are smart. Point, though. It's, don't ask Shout me stupid fucking questions. I just won a fucking Champions League. Piss off. But, um, yeah. Manchester, bottle jobs, Europa League, Manchester United, was in your baby. What happened? Uh, we uh we fucked it. 
I'm I'm just gonna give credit to Villarreal. They they defended quite well, quite deep, but. At the same time, you can't use that as an excuse. A, a club like Manchester United and the players they have, they had to find a way to break teams down like that. Um, am I surprised with the way Villarreal played? Yes. Am I like going to be like Paul Scholes and sh- like slag them? No, of course. Credit to them. They they did what they needed to do to end up getting a result. And if anything, they exposed our set piece issues quite well and scored the first goal. We United were kind of lucky to get that their, their goal, kind of a deflection, kind of Edison Cavani picked it up. Don't get me wrong. Rashford should have finished that clear-cut chance he had. You know, honestly, United could have won this in the first 90 if they just took their chances a bit better, and they didn't. So, this game goes the distance. Penalties, one of the craziest penalty shootouts I've ever seen. And, unfortunately, someone was bound to lose, and Dav De Gea misses. And, honestly, it's just, it's it sucks to see, but United can only blame themselves. I, I think there was complacency by United going into this. It was it's just Villarreal. We we are United. Oh, I don't I don't even know if it was final. I don't even know I don't think it was complacency, honestly. It just came no, it came down to tactics, the way the team was set up. On paper the team looked very well, but I well, think Solskjaer really 11, missed it. If we look at your starting eleven, it it is a decent enough starting eleven. Oh yeah. But at the same time, is it is it <sighs> It, that, start, that starting 11, I'm sorry, that starting 11 is more than good enough to win a... a oh, yeah, yeah. And the, Other than Harry Maguire, is, like, that's their starting 11. Yeah, no Maguire. It was season. Eric Bailly and Lindelof as center backs. Um, yeah, Maguire was missing. But, that's huge. But really, that, that's and, But the, the question mark is, you're going to you're ask, well, why didn't Solskjaer make a single substitution? It's like he was knowing this game was going to It's like, why? It's like... You look at Pep Guardiola, your your noisy neighbor who's winning trophies. He made a couple of substitutions in the first in in the second half of the Champions League final, not the Europa League final, man. Use it's your brain like, a little bit, Solskjaer. Like I I, I, tra- I praise the guy, I but mean, fuck. I mean, it's not like your bench was terrible. I mean, you ended up bringing on Juan Mata, Tuan Zebe, uh, Alex Tellez, Dan James, and Fred. I mean, how about Van de Beek? Yeah, where's Donnie? What the fu- I mean, he would have probably. Like, I think someone in, in the locker room, or I can't remember, said, but Donnie Van de Beek. This is a guy who played in the Champions League semi final. You'd think he had, he would have the quality to supplement your team in well, a Europe League final. I mean, the the Mason Greenwood coming off for Fred. What? I mean, that's when you should be putting. Yeah, there's so like that's Van my de Beek my biggest critique. There's a lot of issues with Solskjaer, obviously as a manager. I, one of my criticisms is that his, his substitutions are always very questionable. Um, one thing I want to say about the Donny van de Beek's thing, I've yeah. always said from the beginning that this wasn't going to be the best signing for Manchester United because I've always felt, I feel like this is kind of similar with Havertz with Lampard because Donny van de Beek, I always thought of him as better as a player higher up the pitch in a, in, a, in the roles where Bruno yeah. Fernandes lays around it. Yeah. But or even Pogba. I don't see him as a, a guy sitting beside another midfielder. I've never seen no, him as a no. player like that. And obviously, United, they might have thought that, that he, they could do something like that with him. But either he can or it's going to take a lot more time to develop into that type of player. And Yeah, I mean, he's very young and he can, but like it's it's going to be tough. I'd rather put, play him in his best suited position. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to sign a player just to well, change his position, you, you know? You can't. If you want him to play in his best position, he's not going to play all, all that often, like this season, because you have Bruno yeah. Fernandez. Yeah. Or and for example, you know, you, you signed Fabinho to be a center defensive mid, like an anchor, but there's times where you're going to have to play him as a center back in case of injury. But that's not the case at United. You no. want to play your best player in the best position, right? Fabinho is already capable of doing that, though. I don't think Donny Van de Beek the thing was is, capable no, the way of I'm doing v- that. The way I view it is that like Donny Van de Beek is capable of being a CDM when he has to be. But you'd rather play him in his right. I I, I, don't, I don't agree. Know. That's the way I view it. I'm, I'm I, sorry, I, think, I don't think, agree. I I think a lot of fingers are going to be pointed at Manchester United in terms of they've bottled this. This should be a United trophy. They should have simply gone into this final. We should have been the better club and just gone on to. Lose and, the and a matter of fact, but people uh, are disrespecting the effort that Villarreal went into. They put this. They they went yeah. into this game massive underdogs, and. They played a very, very good match. Like you said, they defended very well, very compact. I think one voice was very good in this match. You know, I don't know why Spud yeah. sold them. But um, I I think I think Villarreal deserve a lot more praise than what they're getting. Um, 
And then they and, once you win a trophy, it does go whatever. the distance. Like you said, yeah. it does go to penalties. And like I said, an absolutely insane penalty shoot. Their penalties it does end were 11, fantastic. 10. Yeah. It ends 11 10 on penalties for Villarreal. And like you said, David De Gea was the one to miss Which is a shame. Penalty. Which is a shame because, uh, honestly, let's be really here, David De Gea should have never been in a position to. To being to shoot a penalty, I, I, it's it's whatever. Well, I don't David really expect. David De Gea could have stepped up and saved a penalty. Oh, yeah, exactly. Really. I, I, yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, really I, I would actually hope stepped that. up and slotted. My his thing penalty. is, Fantastic. I don't care about that. It's the people disrespecting David De Gea after that, because that man has done so much for our, yeah. our club. Our club probably would have. There was probably seasons where we would not have even like qualified for Europe if it wasn't for him. Like he was an impact. Like I hope this is not his last outing. There's odds are he will probably get sold to an Italian club or Spanish. So I, I, I hope, you know, it's a shame if that's a send-off for him. You know, it, it's crazy because I think if he went a year ago, you know, when, when when Dean Henderson was still on loan out at Sheffield United, we went, United have the best one-two goaltenders in yeah. the Premier League. Now we're sitting here today going, who is the starting goalkeeper for United? Will it be yeah. Dean Henderson? I doubt it. Will it be David De Gea? I doubt it. Where is your starting goaltender coming from next well, why season? Why would you yeah. doubt it being Dean Henderson? Well, it's probably going to be Dean very Henderson. Shaky as of recently, people think... are have not been happy with Dean Henderson. They I think mean, he I... is deserving to be a, a backup, and and I to an extent I agree. I don't think I Dean think he's improving as a keeper. A you know, number one as a keeper of his age, he's going to go through some dips of form. He's not going to be perfect at his age. Uh, he's proven that he, he it's, but he's proven he can be a good goalie. He can make quality saves. He can. He, he can. can. He's I'm not that. saying he's bad. I'm saying I think he'd be for another couple of years. I think he'd be a great number two. Um, I, yeah, I guess. But the unfortunate part is Dean that Henderson want to be the unfortunate back. part is that David De Gea will likely be sold, and Dean Henderson will be the starter. As United have already made plans to sign a backup keeper in Tom Heaton. I'm pretty sure. Yes, you have. So. That's, that's Either Dean Henderson or Dow De Gea is gone, and I don't think United want to let go of Dean Henderson. No. Just in the case it turns into another Paul Pogba situation where we let a player go and he turns into a world class player. Mm-hmm. But that's obviously you know different positions, different situations, and all that. But you know what I'm saying. Well, let's just finish this off. Uh, I just want to say congratulations to Via Real. I mean, it was great seeing them celebrate with their fans. The yeah. scenes in the city as well. I think yeah. smallest city to win a European trophy as well. Fifty thousand people live in the not bad. there, which is incredible. Would and also, say, I want to give myself a pat on the back. I know, I'm not the best at predictions, but I this did say guy. this on TikTok like five months ago. This guy. I should really choose Spurs as my choice, but I'm gonna go with Villarreal. But that can always change. That was my Europa League prediction. And yeah, you did. Yeah. You did. Fair enough, Lucas. Fair enough. Would you, you, did, you say, you Lucas, uh, watching that Europa League final, you had a Fuck good guy, evening? Huh? See, good evening. Well, Sydney, if you get up out of your chair one more time, I kick you from the 90th minute. Okay, okay? anyways, uh, uh, get the fuck out of here. We'll get Wasim instead. Shout yeah. to Wasim. Anyways, <laughs> I do want to. Uh, I do. A little sorry, bit. So, yeah. sorry. I just want to mention something uh, about United, a United sport. I want to just make my biggest fear. You know, a lot of people are going to wonder should Solskjaer be out after this. I think he needs one more season. If he doesn't get a trophy next year. Sack him, regardless if he gets Champions League or not. Get him out if he does not bring home a trophy. Because depending on who he brings in, there's heavily rumors that Sancho is still coming to the club. <laughs> Which is... If, if Jay and Sancho doesn't come to the club and he signs with someone else, I'm going to wonder, what's wrong with this fucking club? <laughs> anyway, but my biggest fear with Man United is, uh, you know, you watch your noise neighbor city and ch- you see Chelsea start, like... The board needs to ask themselves, look at themselves in the mirror and ask, why aren't we on Chelsea's or Manchester City standards right now anymore? These are clubs that have gone through managers and cycles and are continually fighting for the Champions League, Premier League. Is United ever going to get back to that standard or are they going to fall down to the, where Arsenal are right now? No thing, nothing against Arsenal supporters, but the last thing, my biggest fear as a United supporter is that we'll become like Arsenal or Spurs. Yeah. Like... They need. They need to. I hope. I hope that board, whoever's in charge, you watch that Champions League final, and you're like, Chelsea just walked. Chelsea just won a Champions League final, and they just swapped a manager out mid-season. Yeah. They had Frank Lampard for God's sake, and it looked like the club was going nowhere, and all of a sudden they're, they're lifting the Champions League, and could be likely very strong contenders to the Premier League next year. Are those questions there for United? Well, I can, think. Can, I think- 
I think a point that I think we can move into is Chelsea just go on and lift the Champions League. Yeah. And now here we are today, 24, 48 hours after, and Chelsea are heavily, heavily linked with the return of Romelu Lukaku. Um, I want to go into some transfers here, some transfer rumors, and, and some confirmed managerial changes and stuff like that. Yes, yes, what do you want? Um, can I go get a water while you discuss oh. this? I'm getting up my chair, but I just want to get some yeah, water with some ice in it. Thank get you. I love Go Celtic. Yeah. Glasgow's green and white. Yeah. Okay. But yes, Chelsea are heavily linked with the Inter Milan goal scorer. Um, the reasons are simple. Inter Milan are very, very financially in a difficult position. And they have already let go of Antonio Conte due to his wages and not wanting to spend money on transfers. And it looks like they are ready to sell Romelu Lukaku. Mm, of course, I don't they, know if they're ready to sell him. Well, I think there's, they're ready to sell. I think there's they're more willing would be willing to sell Hakimi, apparently. Uh, I know PSG have yes. been interested. I know his agent has said otherwise. But, I mean, I think they'd rather just sell one player rather than multiple, if possible. It all depends on how bad these finances truly are yeah. and, and what it will take to dig themselves out of this hole. If they do sell Lukaku, I'd be very, very surprised. I mean, without him, they would not be Serie A champions this season. Um, but if if Chelsea do end up going in for Lukaku, I mean, they bring a great goal scorer back to the club. It just makes this team even stronger, I feel. And, and that would be very good competition for Timo Werner to, hey, you need to actually score a goal if you want to be a starting player at Chelsea. So we'll see what happens there with Chelsea. Um... There was also, you said you mentioned Hakimi to PSG potential. Uh, there's also talk about potentially Paris Saint-Germain letting go of Pochettino. Spurs want a reunion well, with him. I don't see this happening. I, I think he'll stay at Paris for at least one more season. Good job, Wazi. Um, yes. I, don't, I don't see Spurs picking up Pochettino. There's a lot of talk about uh, Spurs well, but getting it, Antonio Conte. Yeah, well, I... <laughs> Good that, yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, but I just wanted. Well, I was. You're talking about Chelsea strikers, and it's Tammy Abraham's most likely yeah. out of the door. That will most likely happen. So. Probably. Yeah. So they and so technically, like Timo Werner would be like their only striker. So yeah. getting like a striker in there and then having like a one-two competing against each other would be good if they're gonna stick with like their one striker formation kind mm-hmm. of thing. Oh, for sure. Uh, competition never hurts, especially a top club like that. They want to push for, for trophies. But yeah, I was like, like I was saying, um, Spurs are trying to sign Antonio Conte from Sport Italia. Again, that's not happening. Antonio Conte is not going to Spurs. i got to be honest with you. <laughs> um, we've, seen, it, it, we've seen many managerial changes throughout uh, Europe, especially mm-hmm. Bundesliga, Italy. We've seen Zidane leave, Real Madrid, um, and... There's been managers linked to them left, right, and center. Half of Italy has no coaches at the moment. They've all just swapped at the time. Allegri went to Juventus. Inter got Inzaghi from Lazio. Uh, Napoli got Spalletti. Uh, Boys. What happened, sir? FIFA 22, when we do the championship career mode again, hopefully. I'm taking over Blackpool because they got promoted to the championship. Yes, Blackpool. Yes, we let's go. I don't know why you're bringing that up now, yeah, but yeah, you could run it up a bit later. <laughs> oh, I just saw it on my. He my just read it. That's all it yeah. is. Um, but yes, uh, <laughs> Genie Wijnaldum is officially leaving Liverpool, and he will be joining Barcelona alongside Sergio Aguero. Sorry, did Wijnaldum, you? Wijnaldum, that'll be a good pickup for Barcelona. I think. I think he'll bring a lot to that midfield. Did you Did you hear about the Lavier Giroud? Did you guys talk about that? Not really. Giroud to Milan. Is that confirmed? Uh, uh, according to this one source, Calcio Mercato, I don't know if it's a, uh, Olivia Giroud's transfer to Milan is set to be defined. The la- last details expect to be perfected next week. He's going to land in Milan for medical tests. Unless a sensational twist occurs, Giroud will be a Milan player. I find that odd. I don't think that's true because, I mean, they have Zlatan who would fill in a similar role. They're well, very they similar. the There's- backup striker of, um... Croatian man Mario Mandzukic he left the club after six months so they need yeah, a backup goal scorer Olivier Giroud fits the AC Milan build I'm gonna be honest old not very um, pacey just living his best life since we're talking transfers and news right now uh, with Kevin De Bruyne for all our Belgian supporters I'm Matthias I guess he will be not missing the Euros uh, 
Nor is he at risk uh, he the plans to wear a mask and join Belgium on June 7th. There has been some confirmed transfers, though. Liverpool did sign a player. They signed Ibrahima Kanate for $35 million. Uh, we also saw David Alaba leaving Bayern Munich and joining Real Madrid for a free transfer. So that was a good piece of business there. Other than that, in terms of big transfers, nothing yet. Uh, I'm sure it will happen a bit more as the weeks go on, especially after the Euros. We'll see a bit more transfers. Wow. But, Waz, let's get on to the well, wait, lower wait, divisions. Can I say one more thing? Yes, yes, you can. Yeah. Of course. Like, I mean, I know I've said it in multiple law crooms, but like, I just want to say the Bundesliga is also wild with the managerial changes as well. Literally, Bayern, new manager. Leip they lo they got Leipzig's manager. Now Leipzig, they get Salzburg's manager. Uh, Dortmund, they get Gladbach's manager. Gladbach, they get Frankfurt's manager. Frankfurt gets Wolfsburg's manager. Leverkusen already sacked their manager earlier in the season. Such a mess. And that manager is apparently go going to like the DFB, I think, as an assistant. <laughs> Yeah, Europe's managerial situation is hilarious. Honestly. Especially because there's the, so many big teams that are needing managers at the moment. I mean, Real Madrid job is up for availability. Who takes that? Like, that, that's a Zidane leaving there. Where does Zidane go? You know, does he go to coach France after the Euros? That's where I think he'll go, i got to be honest. But we'll wait and see. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> What's up? What's up? I found, I found this video in Arsat Soccer. Uh, it's uh, Michael Balak at a uh, cabaret show. Uh, and there's women <laughs> dancing, but he's just watching the Champions League final. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go talk about the Championship Playoff Final because we Thank have you. a brand new club in the Premier League for the first time ever in their history. Welcome, Brentford. You've tried a hundred million times, it seems. You lose every playoff final. You're back in the top flight for the first time since 1947. Good job. Good job. It was a great game, actually. I thoroughly enjoyed watching this one. I thought you the said first... outside the 25 minutes, it's not a good game. You just need to watch the first 20, 25, half an hour. But it was a great game because it was enjoyable. The fans were back at Wembley. People were, were happy. There was two old men in the stands. Swansea who... fans weren't happy. Swansea fans, they're okay. They're Welsh. They like to sing songs and have a great time. But there's two old men in the crowd who were there in 1947 watching them in the top flight, and they're back at Wembley today to see him return. So that was lovely. But Ivan Tony does open the scoring in the 10th minute through a penalty. He also had a fantastic, fantastic effort. Saw him volley the ball off the crossbar. He is going to be a joy to watch in the Premier League. We will see oh, what, yeah. if you can continue the form. We saw Timu Puki do it for the Norwich in the championship. Couldn't do it when he came up. The man got Ivan 43 Tony. goal contributions in yeah, the championship. That is insane. Pretty good. Uh, and again, I say Celtic could have signed him for five million. <laughs> we went, no, five million is too expensive. And here he is today. So good job, Celtic. You're a great fucking club. Fucking hate you all. I hope Anyways. he sticks with Brentford and so just plays with Brentford coming up. That sounds weird coming from me, but yeah. I am very excited to see Brentford in the in the in the Premier League. Of course, their Danish manager, Mister Thomas Frank, I believe is yeah, it's Thomas Frank, and. Half of their squad is Danish, so that's what I love to see—a little bit of flair. Um, well, you know what's funny about that Brentford uh, thing? Uh, I think uh, Lou, it was Greg. Someone asked a question in our uh, poll: Who will be the final team going to the Premier League next season? Someone uh, commented one day ago: Brentford can't win the playoff final at all. It's impossible. Have you been li li living under a nutshell? Brentford have lost so many. Suck it. It's wow. funny because that was commented after. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, yeah, have you been living yes, in the Yes, Yeah, but they're finally <laughs> up. So They are finally up. Listen, they have lost so many finals, but they are up. And I'm looking. I'm very much looking forward to seeing them in the Premier League. I this hope is very good water. stay up. I'm happy for you. For Swansea, they stay another season in the championship. Um, Where they'll have to play Blackpool, like Waz yes. said. Yes. Go out to Blackpool. Blackpool. The tangerines are back in the championship. Come on, you tangerines! <laughs> Can Blackpool make a push to the Premier League once again? I hope so. I love them. In Whole the city League. up to the they, championship, they, too. They, so. they are my championship club, as is, you know, in the second division of La Liga. Mallorca is my club. Mallorca got right, promoted. So. 
Let's go Mallorca! La Liga yeah, with Mallorca! Let's go party in Mallorca! <laughs> Away days, Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, Mallorca. <laughs> I would love go. it. Yo, let's go. Let's book some uh, tickets when COVID's all good. Let's, let's go to go. fucking Mallorca. Let's go. I'm down. Let's I know. Go. I know. Greg's like, we gotta do other things, but I want to go to Mallorca, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else we should talk about before we move into questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. So, okay, go ahead, Lucas. Well, our hot. Whatever your segment of the week is, Walsh. So, yes, uh, our in-form and out-of-form performers of the week, or you can say your, you know, hot and cold performers of the week. Liam, let's start with you. What was uh, your in-form moment of the week? In-form moment of the week. And doesn't have to be football-related either. It could be anything. Yeah. I mean... I'm yeah, Greg, if you want to go first... Uh, I was just going to say Brentford, because fair play to Brentford. I'm excited to see them in the Prem. It come, was weird. Like I'm saying, weird coming... From a full fan saying that, but you know, I think my in form of the week is going to be. I'm gonna say Kai Havertz scoring a goal in the Champions League final. That's pretty in form. I gotta be honest. Who wants to go next? <laughs> Me. Go I ahead. will go with Angolo Kante because you just can't hate that man. Yeah, that's fair. Um. My out of form perform of the week. Holy I, fuck! I, let do me, I have let a me list? say my inform. We're doing informs first. We're going back. Informs, in okay. Um, so I'm gonna do a non-football inform because okay. I'll change yeah, it up a bit. Go ahead, uh, yeah, man. My inform performer of the week is related to volleyball. Oh wow! Because Poland? Uh, Poland, they had a player break the record for most aces in a match. Which, if you don't know, in volleyball, you serve the ball to the other side, and an ace is when you serve it, and it hits the ground before anyone can get to it. And he Damn broke right, the baby. record. He got 13 in one match, named Wilfredo Leon. So, plays for Congratulations, Poland. Congratulations, Polish volleyball man! We Good do sports job. well. We do sports we do well sports. now. We do sports in Poland. One of the best UFC fighters. We're amazing at volleyball. Best striker in the world. Just gotta do good well the Euros to back everything. Greg, up. who's your out of form of the week? <laughs> I can't take United <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like that's a loss list. Oh no. Um, I I, I, mine's a list. I got three things. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, don't I, I, I don't have a moment this week, man. It was rough. I, I guess it's Manchester City. Like it's pretty simple, but I don't know. More like. Sergio Aguero, you feel bad it's him crying on his uh his last game for Manchester City, so it sucks. Man. Mine, mine. Go ahead. Manchester United penalties. I'm sorry, I had to start off with that. The Edmonton Oilers getting knocked out of the NHL playoffs in four game sweep. That that kind of stung me in the heart. Mm-hmm. Okay, I had a I kind of had a hangover the other night. The, also the had a bad after. week. Yeah, and just recently the BTS meal from McDonald's. I tried the Cajun sauce. It tastes like fucking mustard. What's the difference? <laughs> Have you tried it? Have you tried the sweets? The, the, the BTS meal? I haven't meal? tried the sauce at all. The BTS meal, it, it's basically chicken nuggets, 10 piece, with medium yep. fries. Yep. And you get sweet chili sauce and Cajun sauce. The Cajun yep. sauce basically tastes like mustard. Dijon mustard. Okay. Yeah, that's all Down I gotta bad. say. Down, Down bad. Down bad. Huh? And your PC. Oh, my PC, well, that's like giving me a headache for the last couple of weeks. Um, my down bad of the week... These boys right here, Celtic, because we were supposedly very, very close to appointing Eddie Howe. Uh, 24 hours later, Eddie Howe goes, no, I'm dropping out of the race. I don't want this job. We're now heavily linked with, let me let me attempt here. My my Greek is not great. Ang Postoglu. Okay, so you're like, what the fuck is this guy? He is a former head coach of the Australian national team. He has coached in Japan recently. Never know. Maybe Pardon? someone. Pardon? Yeah, Liam, man, Where? Be a good thing. Who found this man? <laughs> he also, flipped through a, a phone book. That, that's our guy right there. That's how I feel the Celtic board went. Yeah. But I'm not going to make any judgments yet. If he does get appointed, I wish him the best and I, I will stand by him. Um, I just don't understand how there's not uh, any other. Uh, would you prefer list? him or one of the old boys? That's Celtic. Who is one of the old boys? I don't know, like a Roy Keane. <laughs> no, God, no, I wouldn't want him. 
Uh, okay. well, I would like what, a Chris what, Wilder. What, I want a Chris Wilder. Well, what I hear about this guy, he's apparently like p- plays very attractive football. So if he can get that implemented, and if he has some patience, if like if he gets any Tom patience, Rog- Tom Rogic is, Aus- is Australian, and he said he's very similar to Brendan Rodgers in his training, high intensity, attacking football. So who knows? Maybe yeah. I'm not going to make any. The thing is, yet. Celtic fans aren't very patient, and especially with no. Rangers being good. Yes. Yeah. Speaking Crashing of Chris guys. Wilder, you guys should you should have went for Slava Danovic. No. Now he's at Sheffield United. Before yeah. we get the questions, one last thing I want to bring up is that if you guys haven't seen on bad. if you guys haven't seen on TikTok, um, there's a account called FC Wonderkit. They have, they have an amazing TikTok and YouTube channel. Definitely check them out. They, they followed us back, so good on you guys. <laughs> I want to bring up one of their TikToks because apparently this is how you pronounce Rafael Guerrero in Portuguese. But how did you say Rafael Guerrero? Because that that one blew me away, and I know the comment section is going to love it. Rafael Guerrero. Oh. Rafael Wow. Yeah. I know, I know it may, I, I'm Portuguese, so Rafael Gred is the way we say it. Ruben Dias, Rafael Gred. How did you say Rafael? Gr- Rafael Gred. I don't think Gret. I can do that, man. Gred? <laughs> Let me try. Well, we're not Portuguese, so. Well, let's just bring it up these random TikToks. So he's having a great time today. <laughs> uh, uh, my Rafael downbad Gret. of the week is Inter Milan. They go from lifting Syria, being all happy, to one day later. Everything becoming a dumpster fire. I mean, that's same with Leo. Leo's the exact same. They're in the same dumpster fire. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. But, boys, it's time for questions. Let's go. Yeah, there's nothing, no questions really out of the ordinary. Do we ordinary. need to do questions or? They're, they're, I mean, we'll ask, we'll just read some comments for sure, though. Like, like uh, imagine he asked if you guys could do a kit tier list when the big teams announce their kits for next season. It's happening, don't you? No, I'm for the Euros, don't you worry, it's happening. Me and Wazinho, baby, are going to get on top of that. Okay. It'll happen. But we'll have some content with tier lists coming soon, hopefully, to this channel. Um, Hamish, um, your co- question kind of confused me because uh, can you guys is please Hamish name... or is it Hamish? Like Maybe Hamish. it's Hamish. Maybe. Hamish. I, I oh, Hamish. Be. But uh, he asked, can you guys please name your team of the year for 2026? No, I apologize. I can't do that. I, you never know. Some Phil Foden or Mbappe could come around. Phil Foden, Mbappe, Billy G. That's it. Well, we, we can Davies. name that. If we're still doing this in five years, we will do it. I'll well, that. I, I, you know, as fun as that is to do, you know, that, that's a fun question and all. But for me personally, it's like, I don't know if some random kid, I don't know where unexpectedly comes out and starts performing out of his mind. You know, maybe the next Messi will show up, the next Cristiano Ronaldo. Let me, you know? let me tell you, as someone who grew up in the same city three years ago, I would not have expected Alfonso Davies to be starting for Bayern Munich. Let me tell you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I watched him play live for, for Vancouver Whitecaps. I said, this guy is very good. Did I think he'd take the step and start for Bayern Munich? No, he not even, in a million He wasn't years. even playing left back at the white caps. Yeah, he's not really, he was playing left, left wing, yeah. And he was very good. His pace in behind was incredible. But it was like, did I ever see that step from Bayern, from, from, from MLS Vancouver to Bayern Munich? Not at all. I, even when the, when the transfer went through, I remember saying, well, he'll probably get loaned out. He'll play for the second team. He'll have, you know, a couple of years bumping around. Man, starting and win, winning a Champions League. So, you know what? Things happen. <laughs> Okay, yeah. and I think this is the final question, but you guys probably won't know this player, but this guy explains his situation, so just keep in mind like his situation and what you would do. So I'll close Jeffrey, my eyes and imagine Jeffrey. Okay, Jeffrey Koomans, he asked, "What do you guys think?" Uh, if I pronounce his name, I'm sorry. Uh, Georgios Jakubmakis should do. What should this man do? He's the top scorer of this season in the Dutch Eredivisie with 26 goals, 7 more than number 2. He got relegated with his team, uh, VVV Venlo. First time ever a top goal scorer got relegated with his team in the Eredivisie. Is he an option for Brentford if they sell Ivan Tony, or is that a step too high for him? It's a bit uh, of a, a step a, too a... high because to go from the Eredivisie to the Premier League is a very high step, especially if you're playing like with a relegated side. What he should do. Come to Celtic. We need a new goal scorer. I really would appreciate you, that. Why would you? Why would he downgrade? <clears throat> we can offer you the potential of Champions League football. If not Champions League, 
hopefully Europa League. Well, this guy might be Greek, so this guy is Greek, so you know, Greek manager. Greek, Greek manager, come, come! We have a Greek goalkeeper. Can you be, uh, be in the Champions League and dr- no, Liam? What? Can, wait. So, like, how does it work? Can if you don't make Champions League qualifiers, like if you don't get qualified for the Champions League, you go to the Europa League, right? If we get, I believe, it, if, we, if we if Celtic get to the final qualifier of Champions League and don't win, we would drop into a Europa League qualifier final, okay, so la- then, final round and then go in. So then if you get third in the Europa League groups, do you go to the Conference League? Is that how this works or is that not a thing? I actually don't know. Lucas, do you know? Can you repeat? Let's say your Europa League. So you know how Champions League third place drops down to Europa League. Does third place Europa League drop down to Conference League? Uh, I don't know. These are great footballing questions, Greg. Ten out of ten. Good job. I was just. We gonna, don't know. My all my entire point was I just hope Liam's talking about Champions League. I just hope he drops the but, Conference League. But so I'll take but any the answer to European this comment football. is go to Celtic. Uh, uh, that's my answer. Um, I, I don't think ultimately, just just move. I don't think Tony's gonna leave. I don't. Me I either. think he'll stick with Brentford. Yeah, uh, he and did also, so well we don't there. Really know so. about this player? We've never watched him, so we don't know if he'd actually be a good fit. If if his goals and, are due to him or something else, but yeah, and he yes, he should team. move somewhere though. He yeah, he shouldn't go down to the second division of the Dutch league. He team should go somewhere. Golden it's boot and, and relegated. It's achievement. That's it's, big. Yeah. Yeah. There's even an article saying we assume he'll leave from the director of the team. <laughs> yeah. And it's a similar situation to like someone like Adam Armstrong, for example, who has a lot of goals in the championship. And Blackburn finished what, like 18th or something? Like, I, I don't see him staying there. He'll go somewhere. The name gives you PTSD. I break out your shakes. Adam Armstrong is 15 nil. <laughs> but you know. But let's end it up. I think that's a good way. <sighs> I've thoroughly enjoyed this podcast. It was very I've made fun. fun of Manchester City. I've made um, fun of Manchester United. A, a, look, a look ahead, of made course, of we have the Euros coming up, although that's not for another, I think, two weeks. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know. Um, Less. I think the podcast next Sunday will be more focused on the uh, Euros. As on June the 11th, uh, fr- it's a Friday, that's when the Euros start, so... You know, going into that week, the podcast will be with That's the Euros Week. I will try to release some Euros content if we can. Yeah, if you are still here listening, we greatly appreciate it. But yes, yeah. the 90th minute, very, very quickly here, we'll transition to what, pretty much 100% Euros content. We're going to be putting out as much as we can, as well as streaming over on our Twitch channel. Link will be down in the description for that. You can check it out. You can also check us out on our social media, our TikTok or Instagram, stuff like that. That way you can stay up to date with whatever schedule we do come out with for the Euros tournament. Uh, but yeah, if you are still watching, thank you very much. Make sure you leave a like. Uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure you are subscribed to the channel here on YouTube and following on any of the audio apps. Uh, comment down below. Give us your questions for next week's podcast. Also, give us your thoughts and opinions on anything we talked about today. Before we do wrap it up, though, once again, I want to mention the fantastic guys over at Manscaped.com. You can use code 90th to get 20% off plus free shipping. The lawnmower 4.0, you need it. Pick it up. Great gift for Father's Day. They have a lot of other fantastic products as well. Number one in male grooming below the waist. Check out Manscaped at manscaped.com. But from the four of us and Maddie, wherever he may be, this has been yet another week in the beautiful game. We will see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.